Good afternoon everyone here at Parramatta. God bless you all. Just sharing some scripture with you. And I'm, I'll be reading from Psalms 1-6, then Revelations 2-5. In Psalms it says, For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the ways of the ungodly shall perish. So, there's a warning to let you know that uh, God's looking at each and every one of us. He loves each and every one of you dearly. And He's going to bless the people that are righteous, that love Him, follow His, his commandments, and are obedient to Him. But He also says that the ungodly people who don't want to know Him or Jesus Christ they shall perish and we know we're in the end times now and we believe it won't be very long <laughs> till the return of Jesus and we're expecting the return of Jesus every day it could happen any moment in the twinkling of an eye it says in the Bible that's how quick so just have a look at yourselves and be aware that God is watching you He's calling you to, into his love uh, and you've got the choice to make whether to receive Jesus as your Lord and your Saviour and uh, come to God. And you've got free will to do that. In Revelations 2.5 it says, and this is speaking to the, the Christians here, the followers of Jesus Christ, the people who are obedient to God and my testimony is that I've met Jesus personally I've had a supernatural touch from God and I know that God is real so if you're walking around with doubts I'm telling you that God is real and he's closer than the very breath that you take he's right beside you he's just waiting for you to knock on the door and invite him into your heart so Revelations 2, 5, it says, Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. And the old, both the Old and the New Testament continually talk about coming to God sincerely, asking his forgiveness and repenting especially in the in the, in the new testament um, that's the whole reason jesus came and died for you he shed his blood he took upon himself your sins and mine in order so you could come to god in repentance and have your sins forgiven and the reference to um, revelation 2 5 actually is matthew 21 41 and it actually goes back to the wicked vine dresses and it quickly it's a story where uh, a landowner leased out his land and um, he went away for a while and when he returned he was expecting the first fruits now this is exactly what was what was said in, in revelations 2 5 remember your first works and your first fruits and what happened he sent servants and the first lot, lot of servants were killed when the owner found out he sent another lot of servants they had the same faith then he said i'll send my son i'll send my son surely they'll honor him and what they did they threw him outside of the property and killed him so what do you think the response of uh, of the owner was to kill the wicked people and cast them out so it's a warning to to uh, walk the line believe and keep your trust and love in jesus and obey and be obedient in 2 corinthians 13 5 it says examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith test yourselves do you know yourself 
that Jesus Christ is in you, unless, indeed, you are disqualified. So, this is all about remembering your first love. And I know when I first surrendered and made Jesus Christ my Lord and my Saviour, God touched me mightily with his love. He filled me with his anointing and his power. And it's a wonderful experience. And what you should do once that happens is get into the Bible, study, and lean on the grace of God. Trust in Him. But that doesn't happen, happen automatically. It's a daily walk, step by step. And your faith increases as you see God's love and protection touching you. So this is about, this is telling you to remember your first love. Don't fall away from it. Don't backslide. Otherwise, the lampstand will be taken away from you. So remember your first love and the relationship that you, that you have in Jesus and the fruits of the Spirit and the main fruit that God requires from us is to use our testimony and bring people into the kingdom. Not just be a part of a church or a community and a believer. He wants you to flourish and he wants you to bring people into the kingdom as well. Bring them into salvation, to know his love and grace. And then in John 14, 23, it says, so stop and examine yourself. Repent. And ask the Holy Spirit and Jesus into your heart. And then in, and then do what John what, what John says in 1423, it says, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my father will love him. And we will come to him and make our homes in him. Now that's written in black and white. That's a promise from God to you. If you will open your heart, he will come to you. And all it takes is for you to repent, acknowledge Jesus, come to him sincerely, and he'll come and make a home with you. So I'll just share what we call the sinner's prayer. It's an invitation. And it's your step to starting a real relationship with God and his son Jesus. And what Jesus asked us to do was to to be born again in John 3, 3. And he says, unless you're born again, you will not see the gates of heaven and you will not enter the gates of heaven. Now, there's a water baptism and a spiritual baptism. So, and there's a lot of confusion. A lot of churches teach that when you're baptized, that you automatically receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Well, I know from my experience when I was baptized, I believed that I had the Holy Spirit. That's what they taught me. I know I had the covering, but I didn't have the power, and I didn't have the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And the only way you're going to get that is for you to ask. So the water baptism is the baptism of repentance. That's what it says in John. And that's to straighten the roads for you, cut down the mountains, make the road clear so you can come to God in repentance. But you need to ask for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, for the power of the Holy Spirit and the power of Jesus to live in you and work in you. And that's the way you'll have victory each day of your life. You need the, the power of the Holy Spirit to have victory over the temptations, over the devil, over the devils that are tempting you, that are uh, speaking to you, wanting you to do the wrong thing. And you'll get revelation, love, and the covering of Jesus Christ himself. So it's the blood of the covering of the blood of Jesus Christ that will save you. But you need to ask Jesus for it. You need to acknowledge it. And simple prayer. So I'll share this with you. Say it sincerely. And the promise is for you. It's for everybody. 
If you love Jesus in your heart, God says he'll come and make a home with you. So, so share this with me. I repent of my sins. Jesus died for me, that he was crucified and that he rose from the dead. Jesus, come into my heart. If you said that sincerely, from your heart, receive the love of God, the power of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to follow. She always talks to me nice and good.